Recently, I have come to the conclusion that humans are always late to the party. I mean, it took us until 4,000 years ago to think, wait a minute, what if instead of going to the fish, we bring the fish to us? I call it the fishing rod. Little did we know that this stroke of genius already existed in the sea over 100 million years ago. And that stroke of genius was called the anglerfish. Another one! At some point in history, a ray fin fish looked around itself, saw nothing but water, and declared that swimming wasn't important. Instead of your typical dorsal fin, anglerfish took one of the rays and protruded it outwards, forming a lure that is used to bait other fish. Now when I say anglerfish, you're probably thinking along the lines of this horrifying monster. However, this is only one of the five suborders of anglerfish, and it would be a shame to not cover the others. Because they're all weird. All of them are weird! First, we've got the goosefish, which are the only anglerfish that people willingly consume. You may know it better as the mongfish, and it has a taste oddly resembling lobster. These fishes love sitting in the mud, eating seagulls, and walking? Oh my gosh, she's walking. Well, not really walking, more like tickling the floor. Regardless, they still manage to migrate over 500 miles while my fat ass won't even get out of bed to charge my phone. They also release their eggs in a massive 60 foot long veil that carries over a million eggs. And for all this effort, they are rewarded with a staggering six offspring. Scientists have found mothers handing their children scratch off tickets upon hatching. Next, we've got the uh... Frog fishes and hand fishes. Frog fishes have a wide array of camouflages ranging from sponges, corals, to even sea urchins. Found in mostly shallow and tropical waters, they're relatively small, being a maximum size of around 15 inches long. Now, if goosefish walk, then frogfish are marathon runners. Their pectoral fins are quite literally glorified legs. And hold up, bad picture. Nope. 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 There we go. Their pelvic fins are used as landing gear. However, their main talent is hunting. On top of their top tier camouflage, the frogfish has the ability to strike prey within- Damn! Six milliseconds. The lures, the camouflage, the sucking, they all work together to make the frogfish one of the most effective hunters in the world. With a 91% success rate, it's more successful than almost all predators on earth. Handfishes, on the other hand, are pretty similar to frogfish except they're critically endangered. Nah, I'm just kidding. Some of them are actually extinct. Now, can you take a guess why scientists named them frogfish and handfish? I'll give you a hint, it's kind of complicated. So I doubt you'll figure it out. Now we've got the sea toads and coffin fish. Aw, aren't they just so cute? Wrong! I don't know what I did, but that thing is mad at me. They're pretty similar to frogfishes, except that they're found in much deeper waters. These fish also have a quote-unquote lure that sits in a hole in between their eyes. But the craziest part is the lengths that these fish go to be lazy. One species can gulp down a ton of water and hold their breath for up to four minutes at a time, increasing their body volume by around 30%. They do all that most likely because breathing just takes up too much energy for them. It saddens me to say this, but the chair toilet has finally been dethroned. The new era of laziness has begun. Is that the... The batfish? These things are basically if sea toads got smushed into a pancake. Hey, wait a minute. That's a species. Wait, why does that actually make sense? And why stop at pancake when we could have a Louisiana pancake? <laughs> Let me guess. It's from the coast of Louisiana. I fucking knew it. The fish can be distinguished by its unique lure, which is not only retractable, but also shoots out a fluid to attract prey. You know what? It is my fault for making that connection. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. The deep sea anglerfish. Finally, anglerfish that actually swim. To start, deep sea anglerfish have lures that contain light. During their development, they'll acquire bioluminescent bacteria inside of their lure, which provide the fish with the famous glow that we all know and love. However, there are some fishes within the fanfin family that aren't confirmed to have light yet. But to be honest, if I saw that, I'd be turned off too. But at a depth spanning the bottom of the twilight zone to the middle of the midnight zone, these fish are in a complete food desert. As in if there's food, you better not complain. So to survive in such harsh conditions, they have a couple of standout features. The first being that, in peak condition, they swim at an abysmal rate of 0.24 body lengths per second. To give you a perspective, that'd be a Toyota Camry going 2.6 miles per hour. And I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt too, because most of the time, they just plop their ass down and wait for the water to move them. With this knowledge, I think we have to discuss something very, very important. Have you seen Finding Nemo? If so, you have been misled! First off, what is a clownfish and a blue tang doing in the midnight zone? These things barely surpass the deep end of a pool! And second off, did somebody give them Adderall? Absolutely zero anglerfish got enough energy to be moving like that! Whatever your idea of these fish are, 
think lazier. And probably smaller too, because these things are usually less than a foot long. In addition to barely swimming, their mouth and stomach are mind-bogglingly large in proportion to their body. As in, is that a fish in your stomach, or are you just happy to see me? Not only do they have the ability to consume fish much larger than themselves, but they're also able to store food in their body to digest later. And just look at those teeth. They're perfectly angled to shovel meat down their throat. Now what if I were to tell you that every deep sea anglerfish I've shown so far is a female? And what if I told you that I don't even have to check? Well, I know this because deep sea anglerfish have one of the most horrifying secrets in the animal kingdom. You see, in the anglerfish world, there is no such thing as equality. Not even a single drop. Deep sea anglerfish can be split up into two different groups. Normal and so inferior it's not even funny. Or as the scientists would put it, female and male. And yes, these are both in the same picture. Let's say we have a female anglerfish that's around 2 feet long. Quite a large size for such a creature. In this case, the male would probably be around oh. 2 to 5 inches. And if that doesn't sound matriarchal enough, the most extreme cases see anglerfish females being 60 times longer and half a million times heavier than males. I would choose the bear. This isn't just inequality. It's complete and utter dominance. Now it wouldn't be too bad if the males had a cute little lure or something like that, but no. Matter of fact, they can barely hunt anything, period. But like a dog to another dog's ass, their entire goal after hatching is to chase after a female angler. And for the successful few, they'll bite into a female and never look back, essentially turning themselves into a parasite. As in they dissolve the skin and fuse their bodies together. An undeniable 10 on the freaky scale. For the rest of their life, they'll rely solely on the blood of the female, but at a cost of losing literally everything. Their eyes, fins, and even internal organs will start to die off. And by the end, males will have turned into nothing but a set of <laughs> testicles. Once reduced into a sperm bank, the female will use it and it's up to seven other males to pump out sperm whenever necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now transcended the freaky scale. We have reached heights unimaginable to the human eye. Okay, that's not true, but I mean, you get the idea. But when it comes to anglerfish, there's a ton of diversity. So much so that I can safely confirm the following. Not all males succumb to becoming cum dumps. In some cases, males just latch on for a short period and then skedaddle out of there. So choose your father figure. Maybe he'll visit next Christmas or eight sets of testicles. Surprisingly, males may even live a life of freedom and independence, but like really trash independence. Like no lure, stunted digestion, small as fuck type of independence. In conclusion, if there's one thing I've learned from anglerfish, it'd be to always treat your partner with respect. The last thing you want to do is to be in a relationship where one person has to sacrifice everything for the other. It's always important to respect each other, but most importantly, to respect oneself. Psych! I need me a sugar mama now!